Okay guys, we're back down here at Golf Swing Systems with Alex and today he's going to show me and give me a demo of the Flightscope Mevo Plus, including the Pro Package as well. So I'm really interested in giving it a go, checking out some of its features and seeing how it stacks up against the Skytrack and Garmin R10 and some other launch monitors as well. Carry is 183.2 yards. This is the Flightscope Mevo Plus. This is kind of the main competitor to Mitch's unit, the Skytrack. So yeah, they both sit between that two and three thousand pound mark. The Flightscope, however, when, a, when opposed to the Skytrack, is a radar system. So I normally refer to it as a baby trackman. Now, both units use what's called a Doppler radar system. So it throws up a basically a big radar patch, you know, like a, a, a sheet of radar, so to speak, and it tracks you through space. Now, what the Mevo does well as well, it takes into account its camera. So it has a camera on the front, and they've developed what they call fusion tracking technology. So that's where it uses the camera and the radar in a number of different ways throughout the programs to find a lot of different data to do with your swing. Now, the strength of the Mevo is in the amount of data you get. So with the Pro Package, which is an add-on to your, your base unit, it's about, you know, it's, it's an expensive add-on. It's about 700 pounds extra. But when you work that in, you get 27 measurable data points, which is, you know, it's a huge amount of data when you compare it to the Skytrack, which is only giving you ball data. What you're going to get there is things like your club path, your face to path, your attack angles, uh, things like H plane, H plane and V plane, which are a little bit beyond me. And uh, you even get things like, you know, shot shaping. It'll, so it'll start to tell you which shot shape your, your, your swing is going to produce without you even having to see it on the screen. It's going to say you're hitting a fade, you're hitting a draw, you know, whatever, whatever your swing is doing. And then the, the strength as well that you're going to see is the instantaneous nature of, of the, the data. So if we get Mitch to hit one quickly. So yeah, that's a good point with the Skytrack. We have a delay, don't we, between shots? Yeah, so the Skytrack is delayed because it's taking photos of you as you hit the shot. Carry is 176.3 yards. The radar is tracking you throughout your swing. So there's a lot less that it has to work out once you've actually hit the shot. So whereas Skytrack is what's called a photometric launch monitor, this is a radar. Carry is 180.5 yards. Ready. As you can see, you can change the way you see your shots in a number of different ways as well, which you can do on a vast number of launch monitors. You can do it on the Skytrack where you can see different perspectives of how you hit the shot. However, where you're going to see the best, in my opinion, the best view of what you're doing is you're going to take away all shots, go down the line, and you're going to see the standard launch monitor range picture, which is, there's a reason everybody uses it. It's the best way you're going to see your shots. So yeah, the, the metrics that the Mevo Plus gives you, the, there's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like Alex was saying about the Skytrack, you get a, a, a few, how many do you get on Skytrack? I think you about? get six measurable data points for Skytrack. Some of the Skytrack parameters are calculated, whereas the Mevo measures a lot more, doesn't it? Yeah, so the, the strength of the radar is it's going to, it's measuring a lot, it's a measuring a lot more of what you're doing rather than what the ball is doing. Yeah. So that's where, Skytrack is very, very good, is measuring what the ball is doing because it's taking those photos as you reach the ball. So it's taking photos as the club head gets to the ball and in, they say it's the first foot of ball flight. Yeah, yeah. They, that, that data is very accurate. So the, the ball data on the, on the Skytrack is basically next to none. Yeah. Um, whereas the flight scope is not just looking at what the ball's doing, it's also looking at what your club is doing and also what your club path is doing. So it's not just giving you club face data, it's giving you club path mm. data as well. Cool. So if you're looking to sort of make changes to your swing, it starts to become really, really useful and be able to see the intricacies of your swing. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, one, not downfall about the Mevo Plus, um, you need a bit more space than the Skytrack, yeah. don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So the Skytrack with its photometric system sits, as you will have seen in Mitch's videos, it sits you completely adjacent to where you're hitting. So you, in theory, only need enough space to be able to swing a golf club safely. Whereas the Mevo, it requires a minimum of eight feet behind you and a recommended 12 feet. And then obviously the same again going to the screen so it can measure the ball flight. Um, you can bring that screen closer and use its short indoor mode, which will still track everything. It's just uh, not tracking the ball flight quite as well. Wow. So yeah, you do, need, you do need significantly more space than you do with the Skytrack, which is why actually when we're doing 
uh, you know, particularly sort of small garage installations. You know, like a single garage where someone's got enough space to swing, they've got enough space for a screen, uh, a screen, but then they don't have that space, that spare behind them. We'll often go for the Skytrack just because it's so convenient being right adjacent to the player. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a larger room, the flight scope Mevo, then yeah, it gives you that sort of trackman experience without the huge, the huge price. Tag. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Uh, right, so we go through some of the features on the Mevo yep. Plus. I, I like this Mevo, you know. I think it's good, it's, isn't it? uh, it's very good. If I had the space, I think I'd be going for a Mevo Plus. Carry is 152.8 yards. Ready. So first of all, as you've all seen in the B-roll and of Mitch hitting already, this is the standard flight scope driving range. Now, this will look broadly similar to what you'll see on Skytrack, on Trackman. They all have this sort of standard down the line range. Now, what you get with Mevo is you do get a number of different perspectives that you can take. You can look at your shots from the side. You can look at shots from, you know, this perspective, which I think is really cool looking. Uh, you can also overlay all the shots you've hit. But then what Mevo does better is it gives you a huge amount of data when you compare it to the Skytrack, as we've said. Now, if I go to the dashboard mode here, you can see just how much data you actually get. So you've got things like, you've got your carry distances and all the ball data and all the, all the speed data that you're gonna get in a lot of launch monitors. But then you get things like your club path, you get things like your face to path, dynamic lofts, angle of attack, all these things where it is measuring what is happening to the club as well as what's happening to the ball when you're swinging. Okay. It's a lot of numbers. It is a lot of numbers. <laughs> Let's switch it back to the perspective to see Mitch hit one more. Carry is 156.9 yards. That was a good shot. Yeah, that was massive. Now, where I mentioned fusion tracking, I mentioned that the flight scope has a camera. Now, what you can do with that is you can actually go to its video function and it opens up that camera. So if Mitch addresses the ball, you can see Mitch in all his glory on the screen. And if he hits a shot. Carry is 131.1 yards. So now Mitch has hit one on the video recording software. What we can do is we can go into our iPad. We can find the video. Now this is all recorded within the Mevo and we can go back and scroll back and find positions in Mitch's swing. For instance, his impact, his top position. We can look into where he's taking the club away. Now, as you can see, the video quality is what it is. Yeah. It gets you a video and it gets you able to see your swing in time. Where you'll notice the difference between this and something like Trapman is just in the quality of the camera. Okay. So in Trapman, you're going to have, you know, almost 1080p. Yeah. You know, very, very smooth High video. High frames per second. Yeah. Whereas this is a lot more to do with just seeing your swing in, in, in motion and seeing where you're getting to in like the top position and especially that identifying the, the impact position. So it identifies the exact frame that you reach impact. That's cool. So you can see you're quite nicely centered, your hips are cleared and you have an early extended. So you can start to look into how, you'll get, how your swing is progressing. So it's, ju it's just a recording feature. It doesn't give you any sort of analysis and such apart from the data that you Yeah, get. that's where you're going to see the difference between this and something like, uh, like Trackman. Right, so okay. Trackman is going to analyze your swing as it videos you and then it's going to overlay things like your club path, right, the, okay. ball, like, yeah, the, face, the face angle the launch angle, all sorts of things like that. Yeah, cool. This won't do that. This is much more video recording. So this saves you from setting up a separate camera in your simulator room because it's already got one built in. Now, the next feature we're going to show you is the really, really techy stuff. So this is showing off H-plane and V-plane, which is the relationship between your club and the ground. Now, this is a little bit beyond me. I play to a sort of a decent level, but this is way beyond. This is where you're going to be a pro or you're going to be a tour pro looking into the real fine details of your swing. Now, the only place I've seen this change on my swing particularly is if I come up out of a shot. So if I start to swing and I start to stand up and early extend, you'll see these numbers change slightly. But what you can actually see is you can see Mitch's dynamic lofts and V-plane and H-plane and his swing at the ball. So if I press play, that is the movement of, of Mitch's club at the ball. That's so pretty cool. when, you, when you understand these numbers far better than I do, say you're a pro, a fitting pro, or a coaching pro, or a tour pro, you're gonna understand that this means something's wrong, or something's <laughs> right. Yeah. He hit it straight, so it's probably going pretty well. Now, FlightScope is all optimized for use on iOS devices. So if you're running it off of an iOS device like an iPad or an iPhone, you then get some added benefits, such as the E6 program. So E6 is an app on the App Store that uh, you can buy. You can buy, you know, whether or not you have a FlightScope Mevo. 
Um, but if you have the flight scope you get, and an iOS device, you get six courses and 17 driving ranges included for free on the E6 program. Now, what that means is you can actually, similar to how Mitch has TGC and GS Pro, you can play golf courses with your friends. Yeah, you can, it forces you to hit a number of shots, like yeah, it'll force you to hit tee shots, it'll force you to hit irons into the greens and wedges, and even it will even do putting, um, although the putting on all launch monitors currently is still a work in progress. They're still getting that to be accurate. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you get six courses, a bunch of ranges, so you can change up your experience a little bit, and it's all free with iOS. So unless you want to buy the added, you know, the added subscription, which will get you much, much yeah. more golf courses, you can but, actually play some for free. But, but this is amazing. If you want to get into golf simulation, then you don't have to buy any third party packages yeah. like you might have to do well, you have to do with Skytrack. Um, straight out of the box, you've got six courses, E6 Connect. You can go and play yeah. rounds on your golf simulator and you're good to go. Yeah, just to make sure it is only for iOS devices. Right, that. okay. If you're running it off an Android, then you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to buy the E6 package. Oh, is that right, yeah, okay. So it's, it's an iOS exclusive. And pushed. That's, not That's bad. a fair way. I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, one of the real benefits of this is that Mitch is going to be forced to hit a number of different shots. So when you get onto a range, you can get into the habit of hitting like a hundred seven irons in a row. And that's great for developing your seven iron, but for developing your full bag, this is really a good option for getting that variety and making sure, say he misses this green, which oh, unfortunately he hasn't, he stuffed it. <laughs> You could have had to hit a bunker shot, you could have had to hit a little chip shot. And although you're not going to get bunker shot feedback from your map, you're going to have to open the face and splash it out and hit it nice. So, All right, auto He's made an auto putt par. <laughs> so nice. I'm assuming that is set to auto put on. Yeah, so the, we've got Beagle, similar yeah. to TGC and GS Pro and all sorts, so you can change the settings in the, in the game settings. We have it set to auto putt just because we're not entirely convinced by yeah, the putting yeah. on any launch monitor currently. Cool. Oh, yes. Slightly left. Oh, no. I think he popped it up slightly. It's nice to be able to hit a driver in this simulator room. I can't do that in mine. Yeah, so that's one thing to think about as well. If you're thinking about putting a simulator in your house and you're looking to spend that premium amount of money, one thing to think about, our recommended uh, amount of space, if you're putting in a radar system like Mevo, is four and a half meters wide. Now, what that will allow, you can do it with a lot less but you'll have to offset yourself to the, uh, towards the right-hand wall if you're right-handed or the left-hand wall if you're left-handed. So with four and a half meters, you can see Mitch is hitting out of the middle of the room and having no worries about hitting the wall. And then you want to look at having the height to swing a driver, because if you're spending you know, thousands of pounds on a launch monitor, you want to be able to hit your driver, you want to be able to hit everything. So we look at having at least three meters height in the room. So this is three meters, and I'm six foot four, and I can swing with no problems in here with a driver. So if you have that four and a half meters wide by three meters tall, you're good to go. Yeah. And then in terms of having a radar system, you need a, a minimum of about six, six and a half meters. Recommended is probably seven to eight meters. Cool. So can you just tell us what size this impact screen is in this area that you've got here, please, Alex? Yes. Yeah. So this, uh, this screen is about 4.3 by about 2.9. As you can see, the pelmets, the uh, black, black sort of framing of the screen, they're about Ten, about 10 centimeters, about 100 mil. Right, okay. So they sort of take off a little bit from the screen, but That's the, the, the room size, yeah. The room size is about four and a half meters wide, about three meters tall. And we've actually got about six meters depth here. So we're able to run radar systems in here. Cool. Um, and yeah, we've, but we've done sort of builds far shorter, this sort of far shorter and also far bigger. Yeah, we've done eight, 10 meters, you know, huge rooms with bars and all Sweet. sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, class. I wish I had one. Yeah, I wish I had one of them <laughs> as well, yeah. Uh, if you head over to the Golf Swing Systems website, I'll put a link in the description below. And if you use the code HANDICAP5, you will get 5% off pretty much everything in store. Is that right, Alex? Yeah, the only thing we don't do it on is Trackman, Trackman devices, because 5% off 20 grand, yes, that's quite that's a, lot a lot of money. Lot of money. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so everything excluding Trackman, yeah, you're good to go. So, so if you're getting a Nevo you, or a Skytrack, you're good to go. Yeah, so all your gadgets, all your other launch monitors, apart mm -hmm. from Trackman, then save yourself a bit of money, use that code HANDICAP5. Thanks very much. If you're interested in home golf simulators and would like some more advice and helpful tips, then subscribe to the Handicap Golf YouTube channel and click on this video in the screen right now.